the minute you identify as an anxious person, the more that you will notice anxiety starts to come into your life because that anxiety starts becoming who you are and that becomes a very dangerous trap. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jills and I help women step into their power, tap into their divine feminine and become their best selves. So if that's something you wanna do, you should consider subscribing and sticking around. So I wanna talk about anxiety today because I know that struggling with anxiety is so common, especially in our modern world. I definitely had my fair share of anxiety when I was younger and as just like a young adult. I was a pretty anxious person. Anxiety was always very much a part of my life when I was growing up. And it's not that I never get any anxiety anymore ever. I don't think that that's really possible or even something to strive for. But I used to be just like a very anxious girl. And there were some periods of time where it just got really bad where I had trouble eating. Like I was just so nauseous all the time that I couldn't eat. And there was one period even when high school, when my principal pulled me aside and asked basically if I was okay. Like asking basically if I had an eating disorder because there was like a few months where um, I just couldn't really eat that much and I got really, really skinny. But I've come a long way. So I wanna talk about anxiety and how I helped my anxiety and how I no longer feel like I am an anxious person and it feels really good. So first, before I get into how I healed my anxiety, I first wanna say that anxiety is not always a bad thing. Sometimes we will just experience anxiety as a part of life when we're doing something new, when we're venturing into the unknown. That's common, that's normal, that's okay. You know, we're experiencing a little bit of fear and discomfort. It's normal to have a little bit of anxiety in these situations. And we don't have to immediately start labeling ourselves as an anxious person if we experience a moment of anxiety. Anxiety is not always a bad thing. And sometimes it's a really huge indicator that something is off in our life or just a sign that something isn't right. I've had this numerous times throughout my life where my anxiety was telling me something. I, there was a time in high school where I was really good friends with a guy and then, you know, for a while, and then it kind of, this is before, before Cole and everything. And we kind of started like, you know, mm, is it gonna be more? I don't know. And then once it got into that territory, all of a sudden I had all this anxiety and my body was just like, nope, nope. It's not, nope, that's not a good idea. And I'm very glad that that didn't go further. I had a lot of anxiety when I was interning in corporate jobs when I was in college. And then when I worked my corporate job after I graduated, when I worked there for several years, I had just like this low level of anxiety all the time. Don't get me wrong, I could function, I was fine, but I had this low level anxiety all the time. And it was because deep down, I knew that I wasn't supposed to be there. Like I wasn't supposed to be at a corporate job. And not saying that that job or any corporate jobs are bad, but I knew that it wasn't right for me. And the minute that I quit, that anxiety went away. When I was moving from California to somewhere else, we were deciding between two states, um, Tennessee, which is where we live now, and another state. And whenever we considered the other state, I would get a lot of anxiety around it. It's like I could kind of logically understand why, but also not really. And my husband actually was leaning more toward the other state. He was kind of pushing for that because he thought it would be better for like career advancement and things like that. But it turns out that my anxiety was right because Tennessee was a much better spot for us. The point is, is that sometimes your anxiety can be a sign. You know, sometimes when you get an intuitive hit, but you don't listen to it right away, it starts to show up as this low level anxiety that just doesn't go away until you fix the problem or until you listen to it. So first you just have to get into the habit of realizing that your anxiety is not always a bad thing and it's not always a problem. Now, the first thing I did to start improving my anxiety was I stopped labeling it as this big massive problem. I stopped seeing it as this terrible thing and judging myself for it. And here's the thing, right? Like in life, when you have a problem, it's very often that the more you dwell on the problem, the larger that problem gets. What you focus on grows. So if you're just constantly overanalyzing your anxiety, if you're just anxious about being anxious, that's not helping the problem. Sometimes you just have to be like, so what? So what if I'm a little anxious? I don't have to make it a bigger deal than it has to be. Again, the more you focus on your anxiety, the more that anxiety will tend to grow and the more anxiety you will tend to have in your life. The key is not to beat yourself up about it and constantly identify the problem, constantly 
be dwelling on the problem and trying to find a solution. Sometimes the problem is that you're just focusing on it too much and you won't let it go. What you focus on grows and you have to be very cognizant of your thoughts. It's really important that you are focusing on things that are bringing joy into your life, focusing on things that are going right, focusing on the amazing positive qualities that you have. So for me, when I saw my anxiety as this big massive problem that I was having, it just gave me more anxiety and it made things worse. And once I started just being like, so what? It's okay. It's temporary. It's not that big of a deal. Things started to improve. Now, the next thing that I did that really helped my anxiety was more of a skill that I learned. And this is a skill that can benefit all aspects of your life, not just having anxiety or getting rid of your anxiety. And that is being able to look at your thoughts objectively. So often we live our life on autopilot and all these thoughts are just coming into our head and kind of taking over our emotions and the way that we show up in the world and the way that we feel. And don't get me wrong, our emotions and our feelings are meant to be honored and they're meant to be acknowledged. But when we're able to look at our thoughts objectively, we're able to just simply notice those thoughts and we don't always have to react to them right away. It's this process of like taking a step back and then just looking at your thoughts like you are a third party, like you are no longer your own self, but you're looking at them objectively. So often we become caught up and overwhelmed with our thoughts and that just causes us to overanalyze things and causes us to have anxiety. But when you can start having that process and that skill of being able to take a step back, look at things objectively before you react, before you take action, when you can start becoming consciously aware of your thoughts and not just living your life on autopilot, then your entire life can start to change and your anxiety won't have such a hold of you. Being able to look at things and being able to look at your thoughts objectively is a very valuable skill to have. Now, speaking of thoughts though, obviously our thoughts are super important and super relevant for our anxiety. But one thing that has really helped me was changing my thought process of trying to get out of those like low level states and those anxiety moments. So what I mean is that there is something called the emotional scale. It's like called the emotional vibrational scale. And it basically goes like way down at the bottom starts at like fear and guilt and shame and all those things. And then it goes up and up and up and it goes all the way to like peace and love and appreciation. When you're all the way down here or like feeling like these really negative feelings, it feels almost impossible. And it is kind of impossible to all of a sudden jump to like feeling amazing. Like that just doesn't happen. So one trick that I have learned that has kind of changed my life and I have used this consistently for years and have noticed how much happier and better this has made me feel is whenever I'm feeling like not very great, feeling a little bit anxious or just having like low heavier emotions for whatever reason, instead of trying to be like, how can I be super happy? How can I get to those amazing high level emotional states? Instead of doing that, all I do is I focus on the best feeling thought I can think. What's the best feeling thought that I can get behind and that I can truly believe? And then once I get to that next best feeling thought, I stay there for a second and then I jump to the next best feeling thought. Because the thing with the emotional scale is that since you can't just go from zero to 100, you kind of have to climb the ladder, so to speak. And this sort of way of thinking has gotten me out of a lot of like anxious, or analyzing situations in my life. This has been instrumental in my growth as a human being. So for example, let me give you like a little silly example that happened in my daily life. So when I was riding horses, I've taken a little bit of a break since the horse that I leased passed away. Anyways, it doesn't matter. But when I was riding horses, especially in the beginning, like I didn't know anything, but this was a while ago, but I made this like silly mistake. I tried to get on the horse, but I like missed my foot and then I like fell on top of the horse. I don't know. And it was just like very embarrassing and we all laughed about it. It was fine. It wasn't that big of a deal. But when I was continuing my lesson and like riding my horse around the arena, I kept thinking about it. I kept dwelling on it. And then all of a sudden I remembered what's the next best feeling thought I can think. It's not that like, oh my goodness, I am so confident. Everything is fine. You know, I am so supremely happy. My next best feeling thought was that it's okay, I'm still a student and I'm gonna make mistakes. And all of a sudden I felt calm. I felt that anxiety release and let go. It wasn't me trying to be perfect or have these perfect thoughts. It was me being like, it's okay, these things are gonna happen. I'm still a student and I shouldn't expect to never make any mistakes. That was that next best thought. It went from like feelings of like a little bit of like embarrassment, right? And anxiety to 
acceptance. It didn't go to like peace and harmony and love. It just went to acceptance. And once I reached acceptance, I was fine. I think sometimes a lot of people who struggle with anxiety can oftentimes be perfectionists. So don't try to be perfect with this. You're not trying to reach those perfect, happy, emotional states. You're just trying to focus on that next best feeling thought. That's it. This is something that's very manageable, very easy to do. And if you consistently do this, consistently do this every time you're feeling like those negative emotional states, whether it's anxiety or anything else, your mental health can start to improve. And this is also like a very great tactic for getting out of like those ruts that we sometimes find ourselves in. All you have to do is reach for that next best feeling thought. That's it. Now, the next thing that I really had to come to terms with when it came to improving my anxiety was kind of just realizing that there will always be uncertainty in life and there is nothing we can do about that. That is a part of life. And it's really important to just live in the present moment because that's all you ever have. There's this quote from Confucius. Um, I don't want to butcher it. So let me look it up. He said, we have two lives. The second begins when we realize we only have one. I love that quote. And I think this is really important to the conversation and relevant to the conversation of anxiety because so often we just get stuck in our anxiety. We get stuck so much in our anxiety that we're no longer living our lives. We're living up in our head and we're overanalyzing everything and then we're no longer enjoying our lives and that's just not how it's supposed to be. But the minute you realize that like this is all we will ever have, we will only ever have this present moment, I will only ever have this life once, all of those like little anxiety moments just seem kind of silly. A great book for this is The Power of Now. It's all about like being in the present moment and how all you ever have is the present moment. The past doesn't exist. The past is just memories that you are currently experiencing in the present moment. The future doesn't exist. The future is just you daydreaming about things right now in the present. All you ever have is this moment. And now all you ever have is this moment. You'll never get that moment back again. Five seconds ago, that's gone. And when you can just live in the present moment and accept things for what they are and embrace the ups and downs of life and realize that everything is just temporary, your mindset starts to change. And that uncertainty in life is what makes things interesting. If you knew everything that was gonna happen in your life, good and bad for the rest of your life, life would be boring. I think it's more about seeing the fun in that and seeing the beauty in that and the joy in that as opposed to the fear in that. Now, the next little tip that really helped me, um, this is kind of like a little funny one, a very random one. And this is something that me and my husband have done. He taught me this, he always has done this. And this is something that he then taught me because this helped him. So basically it's called the it approach. Whenever I notice that I start to get anxious about something or I start stressing over something, I ask myself, do I have control over this? If the answer is yes, okay, cool. I'll try to make some changes. If the answer is no, which is oftentimes the case, then it just goes to, okay, Okay. <laughs> and I really love this approach because I don't really cuss that much, you know, occasionally maybe, but when I say this, it adds like humor and lightness and levity to the situation. And it makes me laugh and it kind of takes me out of that like anxious spiral. Not everything in life is fixable. And sometimes you just have to like lean back and relax and just kind of like laugh about the situation. Life doesn't have to be so serious sometimes. And this phrase and this sort of approach for myself just really helps me to like get out of that like vicious way of thinking where it's just like a hamster wheel of all of these terrible thoughts and everything's so serious and everything is a problem. I've really tried to make life more playful over the last several years. And this is one of the ways that I've done it. Just kind of being a little goofy like that and just saying, now, with that said, this is not a way to avoid your problems or procrastinate or not deal with the things that you know that you need to deal with or deal with the things that you need to change. This is for when you can't do anything about it and you just want to let it go. And so this is something that my husband taught me that we have been doing together for several years and it has been very effective. Even though I know it's silly and I know it seems like something very small, but it's helped us a lot. Now, the next point really goes along with this and that is realizing that you can't control everything. No matter how hard you try, you can't control everything and not everything is meant to be controlled. There is so much value and so much beauty in being able to just relax and lean back into your feminine energy and just being able to let things go. Don't try to force things. Remember that what is meant for you 
will not pass you by. And whatever is not meant for you, no matter how hard you try, will not work out. Being able to just understand this and internalize it and take it to heart has helped me to just move on and let things go instead of trying to force things and control things that are outside of my control. And it's ironic because the more that you try to control something, the more that that thing ends up controlling you. And then your anxiety just starts to spiral from there. Now, another thing that has really helped me to heal my anxiety was having things in my life that were a release for me. Exercise is a really big one. That's a really big one for a lot of people. Exercise is great for this. Specifically, I love dancing for this, or if I have the energy, running is nice, but I'm not that great of a runner, so it's usually dancing. But there are other things like playing music or singing or painting. You need to have things in your life that let you release. They need to be a regular part of your life. We all get this like emotional buildup sometimes. That is okay, but we need those times of release as well, or else they just keep building and building until we explode. These sort of activities are so important. They get you out of your head and into your body, and they get you out of that like spirally way of thinking that we know happens when we experience anxiety. It pulls us out of that. That spiral is a dangerous place to be because once you start dwelling and dwelling on all of your problems what you're anxious about. Then you start getting upset that you're so anxious. Then you start getting more anxious. And then you just start going down this like rabbit hole that you can't find yourself out of. But when you have those moments of release that are a regular part of your week or your day or whatever, it allows you to break that thinking up and it forces you to get out of your head. It forces you to redirect your thoughts. And sometimes we need that. Like I said, exercise is amazing for this and usually is my way of navigating this and releasing. But if I'm like not feeling energized for exercise, Exercise, then it'll usually be like music or like walks in nature or things like that. Or even cuddling with my dogs. Like there's just something so amazing a feeling like their fluffy warm skin on my body. It's a release for me. But anything that can get you out of your head and into your body and force you to get into like a different mindset, whether that's being like creative or whatever it is, that refocus of attention is so valuable and that release is so valuable. This just helps to like prevent that buildup before it gets out of control. Make these things a part Part of your daily life. Now, another huge one when it comes to anxiety is trauma, healing past trauma. But the thing with trauma is it doesn't have to be like these really big, crazy things. It could be like these little tiny, teeny traumas or perceived traumas. I'll explain that in a second, but sometimes what feels like new anxiety, anxiety that you are currently experiencing right now is actually just layered anxiety from the past. And a present day situation is triggering that anxiety from the past. And so if you don't ever heal that anxiety or that trauma from the past, it's gonna keep affecting you for the rest of your life. We store emotions and trauma and all that kind of stuff in our body, in our nervous system, and it affects us until we heal it, until we are actually able to let it go. So it's really important that we understand and identify where those like initial trauma or anxiety moments are coming from and how they can be affecting us today. And sometimes just the simple act of identifying it is half of the healing. Everyone has some sort of trauma that they've experienced in their life that has likely affected them later on, that has stayed with them. It doesn't have to be these big scary things. It could be that time at a spelling bee where you spelled something wrong and everyone laughed at you, or it could be perceived trauma. So let's say that you are a six-year-old girl in the grocery store with your mother and your mom decides to run over to the next aisle really quick, leaves you in the front seat in that little basket there, just runs over to the next aisle really quick to grab the cereal that she missed, right? But in that moment, you thought that she left you for 15 seconds. You thought that she abandoned you. She didn't, she came right back, but that was enough for your body to get into this panic state, into this anxious state, and it might have stayed with you. That is perceived trauma. There was no real trauma that existed. Your mom didn't leave you, but your body and your six-year-old self thought that that happened, even if it was just for 15 seconds. What I'm saying is, is that this past trauma can weigh on you. And sometimes what we think is current anxiety is really just past anxiety manifesting in the present form. So a really good book for this is The Body Keeps the Score. It's a really popular book. It's all about this topic. Besides just like identifying and understanding the trauma, one thing that has really helped me is something called NET or Neuro Emotional Technique. It's basically like this more woo-woo energetic sort of practice 
Um, I don't even know how it works, honestly, but it has really helped me. I basically, I do it with my healer, he does it. And it's just something that I've done over the years for several years and I have noticed the benefit. It's like I can actually feel it being released from my body. So that is also just something to think about when it comes to anxiety. Sometimes you aren't just an anxious person. Sometimes you don't just have all of this anxiety from your work or from whatever. Sometimes it's these old things that are coming up because you haven't really fully healed them or let them go. Now, all of those things are so important for healing your anxiety. Those were like the biggest things, but I also want to mention like little pieces of practical advice, little little things that I do here and there that help with anxiety just in my day to day. So things like taking warm, hot Epsom salt baths several times a week before bed, that really helps me. That really helps me to calm down. It really helps me to calm my nervous system. It really helps me to sleep better. I notice a really big difference when I do those consistently. Certain teas can be really helpful, like, you know, chamomile tea or lavender tea or peppermint tea or things like that. Again, they're not going to solve all your problems, but they can help sometimes just bring it down a notch. Also just eating like good, healthy food and balancing your blood sugar, that tends to help with anxiety, or at least I've noticed that. Things like taking deep breaths, doing breath work, or just taking deep breaths before you do things or before you react like those deep belly breaths, those are very valuable. So those belly breaths are really helpful because they stimulate the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve goes all the way from like your head down to like your pelvis or your colon. And the vagus nerve really helps you to relax and it lowers your heart rate, it stimulates relaxation. Again, none of these things are actual real solutions, but they are tools that we can use in the meantime to help when those emotions do start coming up. So all of these things have been very instrumental for healing my anxiety and letting that part of myself go. You have to remember though, that it is not valuable for you to identify as an anxious person. The minute you identify as an anxious person, the more that you will notice anxiety starts to come into your life because that anxiety starts becoming who you are. And that becomes a very dangerous trap. Even if you feel like you are pretty anxious, even if you feel like you experience anxiety a lot, it doesn't mean that you have to believe that you are an anxious person. You can experience anxious moments without being an anxious person. And another thing I'll leave you with before you go, this has really helped me not just with my anxiety, but with life in general. And that is that there are only two ways that you can improve things. You can either one, change it, or two, change the way you see it. That statement has just really changed the way I see and view life. And I feel like it can benefit you too. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts. I'd love to hear them. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you aren't subscribed yet. I'd love to have you as part of the community. And thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Bye.